Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Ray Vijay Wardena Memorial Lecture 2015. May I respectfully request you to rise for the arrival of the presidential party. Ladies and gentlemen, it was said by James Burton that once we rid ourselves of traditional thinking, we can get on with creating the future. But there are certain traditions that I believe we should not desist from, and that is such traditions as the lighting of the traditional oil lamp, which signifies the dispelling of ignorance and ill will. May I take this opportunity to invite the President of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka, Engineer Vimala Nagamage, to kindly light the oil lamp. He will be followed by our speaker this evening, Dr. Deepa Suryaraji. May I also call upon the Chairman of the Ray Vijay Waldana Charitable Trust, Professor Malik Ranasinghe, to do the honours. He will be followed by Engineer Professor KKY Pereira and Engineer Professor Sam Karnaratna, former Presidents of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka. Today, representing the late Ray Vijay Wardena's family, we have his daughter Roshini Gunaratna, who will also be lighting the lamp. Last but definitely not least, may I call upon the Executive Secretary of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka, Ms. Arundhati Vimalasuriya, to kindly do the honours. Thank you, sirs and madam. Ladies and gentlemen, before you take your seats, kindly remain standing as the president of the IESL will now garland the portrait of the late Ray Vijay Wardena. It is apt that this great Sri Lankan's portrait be garlanded as it is in his honor that this memorial lecture is being held. Thank you, Engineer Gamage. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. May I also invite the presidential party to kindly take their seats. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, let me welcome you to this, the Ray Vijay Wardena Memorial Lecture for the year 2015. It has been organized by the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka in collaboration with the Ray Vijay Wardena Charitable Trust. And now to address you, it gives me great pleasure to call upon the President of the IESL to deliver the welcome speech. Over to you, Engineer Vimalasena Gamage. Good evening to all of you. Mr. Deepal Surarachi, our guest speaker today, past president, council members, Professor Malik Rana Singhna, chairman, Trey Vijayvardhana Trust, Mrs. Anoma Vijayvardhana, daughter of the engineer Ray Vijayvardhana, and other members of the Ray Vijayvardhana Trust, distinguished invitees, fellow engineers, executive secretary, and secretary, star, ESL staff, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Institute of Engineers Sri Lanka, I am pleased to welcome all of you 
to the Desaman Vidya Jyotire Gevada Memorial Lecture 2015. In the meantime, the, we are jointly organizing with the Revi Gevada Trust. So the, our chairman of the Revi Gevada Trust, Dr. Malit Tansinga, he is the other person involved with us to organize this lecture. The institution together with the Revi Gevada Charitable Trust has been organizing this memorial lecture from 2011 onwards as a learned society members to tribute our respect to the late Trey Vijayavardhana, we are organizing this lecture today. That Trey Vijayavardhana excelled in many different areas of human endeavors, agriculture, aviation, engineering, design, inventions, renewable energy technologies, not to mention his interest in water sports. Sports, music and painting make it very difficult to describe him without taking up time from this memorial lecture. Therefore, I will limit myself to stating that Dr. Rev. J. Vardhana was to Sri Lanka what Leonardo da Vinci was to Europe and he reminds us men. His twin passion was agriculture machinery and aeroplanes as he was fond of saying agriculture is my bread and butter. Why aviation is the jam on top of it. In 1955, Ray Vijayavadan designed the world's first two wheeler hand tractor to help small farmers in tropics to mechanize their works. His, he promoted a technique called Sloping Agriculture Land Technology, which is called SALT, originally developed in the Philippines. He, has, he also did field test for dendrothermal power, the generation of electricity from the firewood. The tech, this technology is now increasingly being used by industry. He also introduced intercropping greasy area with coconut, vastly increasing coconut yield. He was chairman of the tea research board, head of the inventors commission and member of the several public sector bodies concerned with agriculture science and technology. He was Chancellor of the University of Morocco from 2002 to 2007. The government of Sri Lanka awarded him his highest national honours of Vidya Jyoti and Desamanya for distinguished public service. With that, let me once again extend a warm welcome to you, to you all for sparing your valuable time to be with us this evening and I hope you will enjoy today's lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. What stirring words. Dr. Ray Vijayavadana was to Sri Lanka, what Leonardo Di Da Vinci was to Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, it now gives me great pleasure to call upon the chairman of the Ray Vijayavadana Charitable Trust to speak a few words about the trust and also to introduce our speaker this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm round of applause please for Professor Malik Ranasinghe. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> President IESL, Mr. Deepal Surya Rachi, family and friends of Dr. Ray Vijay Vodhana, Your Excellencies, distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen. My task this evening is to introduce our invited speaker to the fifth annual Dr. Ray Vijay Vodhana Memorial Lecture. I consider it as a privilege and do so with great pleasure. We are honored to have Mr. Deepal Surya Rachi, eminent management consultant and the former commissioner of the Sri Lanka Inventors Commission as our invited keynote speaker for the Dr. A.J. Vodhana Memorial Lecture 2015. Even though it is not necessary to introduce Mr. Deepal Surya Rachi to any Sri Lankan audience, I believe it is essential for us to appreciate the contribution Deepal has made as the Commissioner of the Sri Lanka Inventors Commission. Deepal is a chartered marketeer with an MBA from the PIA. He was the former managing director at Eagle Insurance, who is today a much sought after management consultant, author, trainer, and a thought leader. 
as the commissioner of as the commissioner he inspired and rejuvenated sri lanka inventors commission to play the important and critical role in promoting invention and innovation in our country i am sure dr late dr revijayawardena would have been his greatest support greatest supporter the revijayawardena charitable trust which is hosting mr deepal surya rachi as its part of the jointly organized dr revijayawardena memorial lecture is a trust set up to promote and sustain the vision and ideas of the legend that is revijayawardena the trust aims to recognize and support innovations in general and focus on sustainable agriculture renewable energy engineering and aeronautics disciplines and pursuits that were close to dr dr vijayawardena's heart for over a half a century the two main activities of the trust are the annual dr vijayawardena memorial lecture jointly organized with the institution of engineers sri lanka and the award of the ray every third year to recognize a presidential award winner award winner of the sri lanka inventors commission whose invention has the greatest potential to be commercialized the grand ceremony to award the ray 2015 was organized in august 2015 without further delay i take great pleasure in inviting mr deepal surya rachi to deliver the fifth annual dr ray vijay vardhana memorial lecture on the topic of shall we nationalize innovation to this distinguished audience thank you good evening ladies and gentlemen thank you uh, professor malik for that kind words president of the engineering institute of sri lanka engineer uh namage members of the trust past presidents of the institute distinguished invitees ladies and gentlemen it is indeed a great honor and a privilege to speak at this very important event and i consider it a very very special privilege given to me thank you very much for the trust for having trust in me to follow the footsteps of the others who have given this lecture i am not sure whether you wanted to agree with me when i ask you to nationalize innovation because after nationalization normally what happens is deterioration uh well this is you know i'm not an engineer but a marketer so i have to agree for a headline which would invite more people to come but to start the discussion this evening i would like to reflect a few minutes on this great human being revi jawadana the way i saw him Unfortunately I haven't had much interaction with him except very briefly during my days on the board of NERD I used to meet him but before that at CISIR which is now ITI I was invited to speak on some marketing topic I was a very junior marketing guy at that time and in the audience was this gentleman seated just like this but he he was taking notes of what i was talking i'm sure it was what i was talk speaking he was taking notes of <laughs> sometimes you go to meetings and uh, take notes to make use of the time but it is i thought he was taking notes of what i was taking and it really touched me then subsequently one day i accidentally met him at club palm bay hotel and uh, i had the great opportunity of listening to him for almost an hour during that conversation he said deepal you know when i invented this two wheel tractor in an audience if i remember correct in us somebody asked me ray did you automate agriculture 
or mechanize the buffalo? He said, I think I mechanized the buffalo. This was the initial two-wheel tractor. I was touched by the simplicity this man has to look at his own creation and take the view of a critique and say, yes, at that time initially, he, then he was explaining to me how many miles a farmer would uh, walk behind a buffalo to irrigate one acre of land. And he said, now he has to run behind the tractor the same distance. But this was a life-changing moment for me. Years later, when I was leading one of the largest IT projects in my company, this is the motto or the theme on which I set it in motion. You know, when people ask to write user specs, you write all what you do now, and you want the computer to do the exactly the same thing. I said, that is mechanizing the buffalo. I said, no, let's automate agriculture. And the vendor who supplied the software in Malaysia, they use this now as their phrase on every project. They start by saying, don't mechanize the buffalo, but automate agriculture. So to speak of a person with such far thinking, brilliant person, I was wondering whether I'm at all worth because he's such a great person. Nevertheless, when I got this opportunity, I thought, OK, right? So before going further, let, me, let us get into some common understanding. Right? And my presentation is very simple. right? And please excuse me if it is so simple, because that's me. Let's define what this term invention and innovation, because these are being used uh, quite commonly. Invention, for this purpose, let's agree, it's doing something completely new. It was never before. And it must be industrially applicable, and there must be an inventive step, you know, a step from the previous level. Whereas innovation is getting used to one of those inventions to make money. First step, you had to invest money. Second step, you had to convert it into money. So having done that, let me tell a few things which qualified me to come and speak here. It was my involvement with the Innovations Commission. And uh, by act, you had to be a person with a patent to uh, be the chairman of the commissioner of the Inventors Commission. What patent do I have? None. So the only tool you have is a hammer, then every problem is a nail. So to a marketer, whether it is innovation or anything, I look at it from a marketing point of view. And we said, let's innovate this place. It was a place for one year, nothing has happened. Because there was nobody to lead the place. The staff had been coming to work in the morning, read newspapers, go home. It was the, one of the most demotivated set of people that I met. But before going, I studied the act and I saw the potential. And do you know, a similar organization had been set up in Japan in 1904, when Honorable Lalit Atlat Mudali created that in Sri Lanka in 1979. So I thought, fantastic opportunity. So we created a new vision saying, Nava Nimayum Mavana Dayak Yasai Surim Pirunu Hetak. You know, being a government organization, you have to have something big. And that inspired them. For me, that was one of the fantastic experiences I had in a public organization, having come from one of the best managed Sri Lankan entities. When I said, this is what I want to do, when I said I want to have a national exhibition with 1,000 inventions, which will be an international exhibition one day, these people clapped. I couldn't believe. This is not the typical government employees that you think of. These people want to do something. All what we had to do is create the space. And these are, this is how I approached it. I looked at what inventors do. They observe, they conceptualize on a, a problem, and they conceptualize a solution, and they bring some technology into it, experiment, do a prototype, perfect it, and then go for marketing of it. 
I simplified it into three stages, observation, technology in intervention, and promotion. And we created the entire gamut of work of the com uh, commission within these three areas. Just to recap a few things so that you get a flavor of what we did. We cr I, 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 I could see the future and we created a platform of a website which even has potential tomorrow to get crowdsourcing when the time is right. We started this national exhibition, Sahasak Nimeu, thousand uh, innovations from around the country, because Sri Lanka must have a place where people can come and showcase. And uh, with ITN, we created the first ever reality show where young people could come and create something. And for the first time, we got inventors who win at Geneva when they return to Sri Lanka to be welcomed at the VIP lounge at the, BMI, the Bandaranaik airport for the first time. Now it's a tradition. Otherwise, you know whom get respected. And then we managed to have every other year the presidential awards regularly. But more importantly, we managed to get the private sector interested in what we do. I like to see some of my former friends from Brandix and places like that here who have been supporting in a big way for these uh, things. So these are just a few of them who came forward. Because I went, I approached the whole things with the mindset, we don't have money. So when you don't have money, how do you get things done? You go to people with money. Right? But in government, saving money is a very bad thing because when you go to COP, they ask, why didn't you spend? I learned that. So right? for saving money, no credit. So you have to spend. And because of what I was doing, I got invited to speak at an inventors conference in uh, Singapore. And there I met Professor Hal Gergsen from INSEAD, who has authored this concept called the innovator's DNA. Having researched more than 2,000 companies that are known for innovating, they have identified some common traits. I was very happy. I was quite close to this uh, observing as a capability, questioning, experimenting, networking, and associational thinking, bringing together things that are not normally together. Five years ago, we had a digital camera and a phone. Today, can you think of a phone without a camera? And I saw the first prototypes in a US company, and it was really, you know, put, just imagine a, a digital camera kept on the other side of a mobile phone and wrap it with a rubber band. That was the first thing. So you bring two things which are not normally together. So in the next few minutes, what I will do is I will explore this whole innovators DNA. You have seen this kind of pictures and I ask what's the problem you see here? Some people would answer, if I ask this question from a management audience, they give very complicated answers. Uh, there's no direction, uh, there's no leadership. I said, no, what do you see here? Women carrying pots. So if you assume that they are carrying water or they are going to fetch water, we don't know what they are having. Some people would define the problem as access to water. So if you design, if you define the problem as access to water, then the solution is something like this. But if you were sensitive to these women, there's a bigger immediate problem than access to water. I can see some people saying the word carrying is a problem. If you have ever carried anything on your head, you know what carrying is. If you don't know what carrying, ask a student these days who go to school. Right. So what is the alternative to carrying? Maybe pulling. So can we pull water? This is the solution. You see, same situation, you define the problem in two different ways by asking the question. 
So if you ask a third time, you might get a different answer. Right? When I first saw this on National Geographic, I thought, why couldn't we think of this? Why? Because we never observed people carrying water. And we were never sensitive to these uh, women carrying water on their head. You know, that's what lacks. So they just put water and they pull water along. Isn't it beautiful? Where did it come from? Come from asking that right question. To ask the question, you need to observe. You need to observe with a fresh mind, not an old mind. Let me illustrate the same thing with a different example. In Sri Lanka, generally when you try to distribute something, that's the kind of scene, you know. Right? Anything free, people flock together and grab. Right? Now if you define this as a discipline problem, what is your solution? You put a vata. Right? Those of us who have been to, uh, you know, second class or gallery to watch movies in uh, Elphinstone and places like that, we remember this very well. They have put even barbed wire towards the closest the ticket count, doesn't it? Exactly. Why? Because the definition of the problem is discipline. But if you define the problem, no, 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 that's not the problem. Problem is one to many. So if you can give one to one, then there's no problem. Right? So look at various technologies people have used in, uh, in uh, doing that. So you've got mechanical and electronic some things, you know, you get a counter system, or you have visual, please wait, right? Like in the passport uh, counter. Or ICT, today you don't have to go in the morning to book the doctor, you can do it on your mobile phone using ICT. Same problem. But you bring different technological solutions. And you see, now we are moving a little bit. One is asking the question. Secondly, bringing some technology to solve the problem. But your solution is driven by the question. Then let's think of this observation business a little bit. We all use Velcro. I was quite fascinated by Velcro. And uh, this was conceived by this engineer in 1941. He commercialized it in uh, 1956 or 60. Uh, today, it's all over the place. How did it happen? He walked back from a morning walk and he had this uh, grass bud on his trouser. Now, we have had the same experience. Some of us were very good students in school. We were asked to remove Tuttir in the playground for others to see how to become a good student, right? Engineers will not have that experience because you have been better than us. You were in the class, isn't it? And in our language, we have so much about Tuttiri, right? Pattiniyam Magaredde Tuttiri, right? Elderly people will know what it means. Young people don't know because today in Sri Lanka, there are so many other places to go. You don't have to go to bed, right? And then there are Theravili. Right? Riddles. Right? Duppattu, posattu, gahaka, maldaka, redi, usagattu. Tuttiri. Right? And as kids, we used to play with, uh, we take tuttiri and take the juice and give it to some khadiyas and get them to fight. Right? So we had so much about tuttiri. And even when you get this nagane, you know, on your eye, you put tuttiri uh, juice. So we, ask, we have been observing tuttiri so much, but we haven't asked the question. Why is this tuttiri hanging on my cloth? If you ask that question, we would have invented Velcro. You see, observation is not enough. You have to ask the question. I just did a single Google search and I found 8,300 mentions of tuttiri in single even now. But we are using tuttiri in the different context. Now let's ask. Let's explore this whole question of asking questions. We say eating uh, malupang is bad. Right? And every doctor says, uh, don't give your children who they eat malupang. Right? But you just wait near any boutique in the morning and see the scene. Parents come on motorbikes, three wheelers, vans, and take the child, open a little box, put a malupang into it, push the child into the van. 
typical Sri Lankan parent in the morning. Now, why is that? Because it's convenient. You don't have to atahodan and all that. You can just eat right on the go, and it's cheaper. So, what did we do? We said eating uh, eating tirungupiti is bad, right? Eating flour is bad. We must have rice flour. So we started making rice flour mixed bread and kurapka mixed bread. Can I see anybody who loves eating rice flour mixed bread? You don't like that. Because if it is bread, it got to be bread. With its texture, the flavor, the smell. Because we are asking the wrong question. What is the question? What can we give to the Sri Lankan consumer rice based product that can be eaten on the go without having to wash the hands? Now, if we ask that question, I am not a food technologist, right? You will think differently, at least from today. But I think there has been this problem has been solved a long time ago. Right? I remember when I first went to Adam Speak like a kid, I carried Aggala with me. Aggala is a rice based short eat that can be eaten on the go without having to wash. I was thinking, how can we compete with Malupa? What about our famous Lavaria? Our great grandmother also used Panipol for Lavaria. And we are still using Panipol for Lavaria. Why do you have to put Panipol into Lavaria? You put the Malupa mixture, you have got a rice based product. Because we haven't asked that question. Or just copy without worrying very much. Because in Japan, they have what is called onigiri. It is a bit like our uh, imbulkiriba. You see? So it boils down to questioning. Observing, questioning. And how good are we in observing? What you see here is the traditional pit to bamboo. So we observe the pit to bamboo and we wanted to modernize. This is what we have innovated. This is utterly energy inefficient. Right? That one really cooks the pit to. Right? Isn't it? Right? Because it is uh, it, it traps uh, heat, it traps moisture, right? And it cooks real pittu. And we bring this and we eat puttu. <laughs> right. From puttu, let's come to kitul. Right? Not kitul ra, but just kitul. Now let's look at the kitul problem. I'm just posing these questions just to get my point across, right? Now, Kitul, we have started to innovate Kitul. What have we done? We still have the same Kitul Hakuru and we still have the same Kitul Penny. We, have, we think we have innovated by adding packaging. I don't know whether there are opportunities to look at Kitul Penny and see what other infusions we can make. Now, that is real innovation. That is real value addition. You see? So it means we are not observing enough. Right? So still the same. And I recently met at the last uh, Sahasakni ex exhibition a person who is selling Kitul stuff. He asked, what about that improved version of uh, uh, chemical that is developed uh, to improve the uh, yield? He said, that's not good because it is not sustainable. Right? The traditional one is sustainable. Right? <coughs> After every uh, Flower, flower that uh, blossoms, right? It continues to give the same yield. Every year, there are inventions that are submitted for competitions. Improved version of rubber tapping knife. Those of you who have rubber estates will know problem is not with the knife. Problem, problem is with labor. Now, just imagine who would want to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and go fight Kodalas and walk in these rubber estates one tree after one tree after one tree and then in the noon 
go collect from tree to tree to tree and carry it on your head? I think this invention is good, but that's not the problem. What's the problem? People don't want to pluck, uh, tap rubber, period. Okay? So what's the question we should ask? Can we find a mechanism that we can extract the rubber sap without having to go from tree to tree? I don't know. You engineers must design. I am not an engineer. Right? I will sell what you uh, invent. But I was thinking, if you can have some wires connecting all the uh, rubber trees and a robo goes from one tree, goes down, cuts and goes to another one and another robo goes and collects. Or I don't know whether you can put some taps like uh, collecting uh, maple syrup and all the kiri in one place. But if you think like that, you will find a solution. You, I may sound crazy. That's why you have a chance of speaking on innovation. Tea plantation, same question. Every time improved version of tea plucking machine. The problem is people don't want to go and do that. Right? So this is the challenge we have in our observations. So while working with innovations and inventors, I observed there are three types of inventions or innovations and three types of inventors. Right? First type is grassroots innovations. You remember the first uh, re uh, uh, speech was by Professor um, No, 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 he was here, Professor. Anil Gupta, right? And he showed so much of uh, uh, grassroots innovations. Those are very simple solutions to simple problems. The common factor is it can be easily copied, right? Anybody can uh, look at it and keep doing it, right? So that's, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's not necessary. That has a place in the, in the world, right? Some problems should be solved with simple solutions. Right? This reminds that you know there was a I don't know whether it's true or false. When America was trying to invent a pen that can write in zero gravity, Russian said, "Throw the pen, just write it with a pencil." Right? So grassroots innovations work and needed. Then there is the intermediary. Right? What I have shown here is a Geneva Award-winning uh, invention by Dr. Lenadora. It was a uh, what I called intermediary, which it which is a little bit of advanced sciences, right? Sometimes with mechatronics, this is a surgery supporting device. Then you get the advanced. This is a nanotechnology product by a Sri Lankan inventor. Uh, it is being marketed, uh, I think, in India. It cleans the air right, by killing the bacteria in the room. And uh, the hospitals are using it. And now they are marketing it for households. So, in Sri Lanka, we have all three types of innovations happening. Then there are three types of inventors. One is entrepreneurial inventors. I put this gentleman, uh, Buddha Industries, because uh, when I went to the Inventors Commission and asked, uh, who is your best inventor? He said, Mr. Mahipala. Right? What has he invented? He invented a cashew peeling machine. Now, this would fall into the middle intermediary level. But today, he is uh, selling them in 18 countries. So, it, intermediary is good because the world is big, right? So, the, but he is there not because there was a lot of support to him because he was an entrepreneur himself. Entrepreneurs will know support. Mm -hmm. I can see some entrepreneurs giving me the smile, right? Then there's another one. He won the last year's Ray Vijayawadhan Award. This guy is from Kaluta. And he had invented a almost natural look like with the ankle function, an artificial leg. Now if you look at, I have put here the Jaipur leg, which is the cheapest artificial foot that you can pick up. Then this is his invention in Kalutar. And this is Dr. Hugh Hare's uh, latest artificial foot, which connects onto the uh, nerves of the leg. And uh, there's a fascinating story behind what he did. 
Uh, a woman lost her leg during the Boston uh, bombing incident and within one year they managed to put an artificial leg like this to her and she danced and there's a TED talk on that. Now that level of sophistication is there. It touches your nerve ends and so it communicates just the way that you want to move your leg. Now in between there's a massive market. right? But we are still struggling to get some real investors interested in this to take it to the next level. He has sold almost 1,500, if I remember correct, uh, or 2,000, I don't know, 2,000, 2,000 legs. Ah, he's here, right? 2,000 legs already, right? In Sri Lanka, he, so, he, he gives a total solution, right? He trains the person, you know, get him to do. So there's a massive global market, just like this uh, cashew peel in Michigan. But we haven't been able to get somebody to come and say, okay, here's the money, we'll put management expertise and take you to the next level. See, this is what is happening. Then there are, so I said, entrepreneurial inventors. Then there are award seekers. I love them. Because if you don't have them, we can't have the exhibition, right? I'm not thinking, less of them but their 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 strength is imagining and doing things right they can't be bothered commercializing and all these things right and now this guy he made this uh, uh, how do you call it you know the gadget to uh, have dungallan you know incense burner english right now do you know, in Sri Lanka, the incense sticks market is approximately 200 million rupees a year. Huh? Right? You want to get in? That's a big market. Now, if you take the incense market, 200 million, a good 10% could be interested in a product like this. Now, you want to Dungalan, uh, right? Dungalan, not to, at least at home, right? Dungalan has another connotation in Singhala, right? But what's the problem? You have to burn coconut shells. And then there's a risk of fire. A very good friend of mine, a big inventor and a good entrepreneur, his entire studio was brought down to ashes because of this Dungalan business uh, one morning. Right? It's dangerous. So you are not you don't want to do it because of that. And it's cumbersome, you know, to now people live in very beautiful houses. We are, the, we are prisoners in our own houses. You can't do anything, right? But you still like to do this, you know, as Kato and all these things. So you want to put right 200 million market. So I introduce a person who was willing to market it only if he can make it more simpler uh, and less weight. He's yet to do it. He's not interested. He has invented another one for the next exhibition. So these are award seekers. But having said that, if somebody goes and says, okay, I'll give the money, I'll take it, do it, he might say yes. And there are of course dreamers. They have fantastic solutions, fantastic ideas. They are so grandiose, sometimes it's too difficult to implement. But somehow they don't want to let go of it. You know, that's an unfortunate thing. And we don't know whether they work or not. So there are these three types of people and three types of inventions. So why is this? I was asking this question. What affects this behavior? Then I could identify three factors. One is economy. Those of us who are old enough, we remember 70 to 77 period, there was enormous amount of local inventions. Why? Because of scarcity. Right? When the petrol prices go up, people invent various ways of uh, economizing. That's when the gas uh, converted three wheelers came. Now they don't want to convert into gas right? because that's economic. But when the economy improves, right? I'll show you a few examples to illustrate this. When the economy improves, you need more sophisticated uh, stuff because your aspirations are different and your expectations are different. 
Then the next factor is exposure and education. Now, education is scientific education basically. Once I read, 75% of the schools with A level classes have only, uh, uh, they don't have science and maths and labs for advanced level. So there's a major problem. Having said that, the last two Ray Award winners, fortunately or unfortunately, were not science students, they were commerce students. But had they had the exposure of science, they would have done much more. You see, that's a great thing. And exposure is what you see. For example, a child in uh, Kalutara or Beruvala invented a uh, kettle which can survive in a boat, right, for its movement. Because that's what she has seen. A child in um, Kundasale invented a uh, paper plucking device, very efficient, because that's what is exposure. Third one is the ecosystem, right? Ecosystem is far more complex. Let me take a few points on the ecosystem. When I talk of ecosystem, I say human capital, technological capital, and financial capital. Let us explore these together. So I'm trying to build on this whole argument on where I started. On economic capital, this is a very interesting example from the 2014 uh, WIPO report on uh, Global Innovation Index. They were looking at United Arab Emirates Dubai as one of the best examples, and I think they are doing it right. Uh, those of you in the back, you can't see what's there, but what it says is, on this side you see funding sources, on this side the value. So $50 to 20,000, there are incubators and uh, crowd investment options. Then there are government programs which are needing little bit of support. Then there are again government programs and guarantees provided. On vertical side, as you grow up, what are the big ones like private equity and commercial banks? Now you just look at this and those of you who are inventors will realize what are the options we have. We have very little or hardly any at this level. Right? There is a big gap here. Except Angel, Lanka Angel investor, inventor, investors, I don't know of any organized uh, places where they can go to. Government, I've been working on that while I was in the commission. You know, government doesn't know to write off, right? Government doesn't know to write off. I don't know, next year also it will come to Pope. Uh, I have recommended, write them off, but no. So if you can't write off, how, how can you put money into a new invention? Right. Then banks will not give because bank needs collateral, right? And private equity is hard to find. So financial capital, we are not very strong. Then look at human capital, which is our biggest strength. And they argue the biggest aspect of human capital is these three things, creativity, critical thinking, and communications. Tom Wagner is considered these days a revolutionary thinker in the field of education. He did a very interesting survey. He looked at people like Mark Zuckerberg and some of these young innovators. And he went to their parents and asked, what did you do for these kids? He went to their teachers and asked, how did you teach them? The teachers said, we always encouraged team assignments rather than individual assignments. In Sri Lanka, there's a lot of team assignments between parents and the children these days, not with children and children. Homework is done by parents plus the kid, so then you call it team in team. Then interdisciplinary learning, now this is completely lacking, right? Can you think? I don't know whether even in universities we have interdisciplinary learning. If you are an engineer, you have math, science and that, and arts, no, 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 what arts? Completely different. 
and teach as a coach. Who is a coach? Coach is a person who believes the coachy has his own way of doing things. What I can do is improving. This is the problem late uh, Premasiri uh, Kemadasa eternally had with the government. He was telling music teaching is not getting the student to sing the way the teacher sings. Because teacher is not a coach there. These teachers had been coaches. And failure is celebrated. In Sri Lanka, failure is celebrated? No way. At the inventors exhibition, I sometimes regret that we have competitions. Well, when you have competitions, there's a lot of participation. But the problem with competition is teachers want their children to win. Kids are okay, right? Come on now. But teachers fight, not kids. And intrinsic motivation. What intrinsic motivation? We motivate Sri Lankan children for the parents' uh, intrinsic motivation. I couldn't become a doctor or an engineer, so you better become a doctor and engineer. 86% of the advanced level students of a leading girls' school in Karambu were doing medicine, not because they wanted, but because parents wanted. So, are we creating a nation who is capable of innovating? Okay, I didn't answer. And what do the parents do? They, they allow them to have play, passion, purpose. I think we don't know that. There's this story of this lady, young girl, he was organizing her wedding and the mother was telling how it should be done. Then she said, Amma, this is my wedding. Can I, can I organize it my way? Well, I couldn't organize my wedding my way. Now, when you have a daughter, you can organize her wedding your way. So, are we allowing purpose and passion even at that? Exploratory games with limited screen times. Now even adults are becoming screen generation. Uh, always we are on a screen this or that. Now these are Mark Zuckerbergs, right? Although we are being made to a... <laughs> I didn't want to say that, right? You know, exploratory games, you know, go find out things in the forest, go fishing, go climbing. No, no, no. You know, I have been invited to speak at schools to motivate children to become prefects. Why? Parents have said, don't be prefects, you are wasting time. If I was not in the prefect room, I wouldn't be speaking here today because I never got the chance to go to university. Right? I failed exams, but I didn't fail in life, thanks to extracurricular activities. Today, no. Unless you can't be the in the first level, don't play cricket. Unless you can't be the head prefect, don't be a prefect. You know, parents are putting so much pressure. Do things they love. A lot of parents are here, they will answer whether it is right or wrong. Do things that can give back to world make a difference? Now you see, this is what parents have told their children. Do something that will make a difference. Recently, I sat through 48 interviews. Kids, we interviewed for an international scholarship. And I could see the parent, I could see the parent in the project that they have done. I could see the parent in the way the child speaks. It is not their heart thing. So you think we will make innovators? We are a nation who was taught you plant a seed of mango, not because you want to eat the fruit of that, but somebody else will eat. And today, somewhere we have learned this question, what is it in for me? You can see, you know, government decided that giving uh, duty-free cars is bad, very good decision. And the very people who decided to say, no, no, for us we need it today. <laughs> you see? So where are we going? Then. This is my sales pitch for school teachers. Why should you allow your kids to get involved with innovations? There are six fall benefits. They will become sensitive to the environment and increase ability to observe. Because they have to think of new things. They go and observe uh, new problems. 
ability to frame questions and critical thinking, which I covered earlier. They apply scientific knowledge. Actually, we did some reverse engineering. This, what we did was, we picked a number of kids' innovations and got a graduate from, a lecturer from the Kalam University to explain the science behind these products. And it is available on Mitta Vihari Hamdru's uh, uh, Learn TV or whatever that channel. Right? Rather than showing things that others have made, kids have made. Develop endurance and creativity. Because when you make something, engineers will know very well, I think, you will create a new problem that was not there. Or you think this is going to work, it comes out differently. And what, did it what, did, what does it teach? It teaches in life things don't go the way it planned. What a fantastic lesson to be learned. And I could see that when the exhibition went in fire at BMICH. 800 odd innovations brought to ashes within 15 minutes, except two ladies. Not a single person was hysterical. They said, You know, what happened? These are the kind of things that happen because they have experienced that kind of thing in their life. And self confidence and communication skills. I must tell you this story. There was this little kid from Bomiria Central. He had developed something which uh, is to uh, peel uh, cinnamon. And there was this uh, John Rankin, the honorable uh, uh, ambassador to, from uh, UK at that time. Now, how to explain this? I thought this kid will get stuck and let me help. No, sir, I will tell. Sir, this is called cinnamon. And this is called kurupta. And when you do it like this, the kurupta comes out. Right? No? <laughs> so John understood. And see the confidence of this boy. Right? And they continue to innovate. So don't expect university graduates to innovate unless they have been innovating, at least thinking as inventors in the school. So, now that I spoke too much, let me give a commercial break. Alright? Give two case studies. This is a very interesting case. This, this girl is from India, from Kerala. Her name is Ramya Josie. She hated washing clothes. Who loved to washing clothes? Except those who use sunlight, isn't it? Right. Yeah, sunlight found that problem. Right? We don't like washing. That's why they brought the beauty and the joy of washing. Right? So she thought they cannot afford an uh, electric uh, washing machine. So she invented a manual washing machine. Now you can't call it an invention. This should have been the first washing machine anyway. Right? Oh, where's my slide? Okay. Now, when I first saw it, I thought, well, in India maybe, not in Sri Lanka. But look at this. This is very new in USA, right? It is.
right? So you can't judge inventions very lightly, right? Now, if, even if we if we thought that manual washing machines have no place, well, there are bigger versions if you want in US, in US, huh? not in Sri Lanka. And look at this. This is a fascinating story. And if you watch it carefully, you will see how Godrich observed the problem and how they questioned what happens there and how they brought in two different technologies to find this uh, solution and how they brought in unrelated thoughts together and how they networked with people. It's called Chotukul. It's a small fridge. The idea was born in a Harvard University workshop conducted by Professor Clayton Christensen, a pioneer of disruptive innovation. An innovation which creates a new market and eventually disrupts the existing market for a product. A small but significant change in design was introduced by a battery in the compressor technology used in domestic printers and using a thermal electric or solid state cooling system. We decided to go for a solid state, uh, primarily because that was the simplest thing a 40 mm by 40 mm by 3 mm chip actually was a cooling as a kg of a mass which is of this. Innovating to save a struggling refrigerator industry in 2008. Chodu was born. A 45 meter fridge that can cool food to around 8 to 10 degrees Celsius on a 12 volt battery at the cost of just 3,700 rupees. That's half the price of the cheapest refrigerator you find in the market. A country like India, to be frugal is absolutely efficient. Because we don't have too many resources, and we really don't have enough resources for the large population that we have. There's no way that we can eradicate the population, nor can we multiply the resources in the short period of time. They have to be resource efficient and they have to be resource effective. So it is important to be true. It is important to be cost effective. With affordability and accessibility at the heart of Chodu Pool, Chodu is the only white good manufacturer in India to address the need of the people of poor by creating a new product category in this invisible consumer segment. But targeting this new segment of consumers and rejecting standard models of distribution to ensure that one who needs a chocolate food gets a chocolate food. A lot of people talk in terms of reaching out to the market and logistics and everything, but it pertains to the visible part of the market where roads exist, the highways exist, the warehouses exist, the people who reach out there. We then have to look at places which 
And that's why this logic of post process nature. That India owns the system of controlling the basis. How do they do it? They didn't have the police system. They didn't have uh, the, the rocket scientists to do that. They are going to take it out for more than 100 years. This side with India Post is making sure Chandrapur is reaching the remotest corners of India and impacting the lives of thousands of households. <laughs> One of the stories that really makes, makes me think that, yes, it has impacted the uh, small pawn shop in Nase, when uh, it's just outside of the river, he's selling cold pawn of the land, cold in the river. And he's addressing the one that can keep it inside so that you can leave it away and get some. And then he was using a brick of ice to make that food. And now, now he learns that the two rupees per bar and he can tax this guy in a big way. And he sells that very to all these guys. After buying Chokubu, now instead of one Chokubu, he has another Chokubu. There's two Chokubu. So the total outflow of one per day from him has gone up by three to four times more than one. He was selling the four times. Chokubu has taken the four. With this model that bridges the gap between portability and aspirations. A relapse model was launched earlier this year, but it isn't going to persist in a lifestyle product rather than a functional appliance. But more than that, we started realizing that the aspirations are far going very fast for them. And we were like, we started looking at, at, the, at the, the higher end customers. When we want to design, we find that the aspirations. So it's a very good example of using all aspects of this innovator's uh, DNA. That's why I picked this example. It's available on internet, you can look at it. And this is another similar example, which is uh, called Matikul. Right. This is a fridge made out of clay. A man during the Gujarat earthquake was touched by it, and he wanted to make a clay-based uh, fridge. And today, he is selling thousands of that in, in India. Right? So, if you look at all these innovations, what we see is these five steps coming out, the DNA of innovators. Right? So, let's, so what we discussed so far is I introduced briefly the concept of innovators' DNA. And I said in Sri Lanka, what affects our inventors is the three aspects of the three E's, economy, ecosystem, and exposure. Then I looked at the ecosystem a little bit deeper on human capital, financial capital, and technological capital. In the next few minutes, let me expand a little bit on the ecosystem because I was inviting to find ways how we can make it really a national phenomenon not something that only a chosen few would do. I see ability to innovate as a skill. The moment you believe that something is a skill, it means those who did not have can have it. Any skill can be learned. You may not innovate the things that the engineers would innovate, but you will innovate in your own sphere. So that's why I consider it a skill. So if you want to change the ecosystem, we need to touch on policy, we need to touch on education, and we need to touch on media. In education, we need to have an education system that promotes innovative talents, talents that will excel on the five points that I mentioned observation, questioning, experimenting, networking, and associational thinking. And in that, it is very important that we bring to our education curricula thinking as a capability. There's a lot of work done by Dr. Edward de Bono on this. And countries like Singapore is teaching thinking as a skill in the classrooms, how to think. We need to go that direction. And there must be definitely an emphasis on science, maths, and technology. Now, when you think of science, maths, and technology, sometimes it is frustrating to think that we still think of the brick and mortar model to take science and technology to the rural. We don't have the time to do that. 
we need to think differently and this is not the forum to discuss that but I pose the question here research to integrate traditional knowledge with new and unrelated subjects now this is very important and very urgent let me give one example just to prove the point we knew meditation 2500 years we knew vipassana meditation 2500 years but then why john kabat singh in usa introduces mindfulness based stress management techniques and mindfulness based acute pain management techniques as acceptable medical procedure in USA that's because we thought that is for monks that is for Buddhist University not for the medical college and the science faculty so there's a lot of opportunity for us to take some of our traditional knowledge and bring the modern technology and do research this is going to be our cutting edge this is going to be where we will excel in the world because we cannot play the game in their league because we don't have their technology they will not give it to us we are still trying to create we are talking about value addition to tea you go to Europe and you go to North America when they say tea they are talking about 200 different types of teas not the tea that grows here what is tea? Tea is beverage. What is beverage? Beverage is water. What percentage of tea you drink? It must be a very small percentage. So we are, we are here to think of infusions. So infusion technology is far advanced in Europe. They will not give it to us. So we need to find our ways of finding it. And we have to teach languages and humanities. Now why do you, why, why I say that? Because languages make people think let me give a good example one of your illustrious engineers Mr. Elian de Silva he's, he's, a, he's a master of words I think as much as an engineer the way he says who is an engineer engineer is a mavi suru marina means innovating inventing isuru means the one who is the it's coming from the word Ishwara is who in charge who is the king now, if I tell you you are not an engineer but you are a Marisuru, the word itself compels you to invent something. Then you will not think of, okay, I'm a good engineer, why can, can't I get a management trainee job in a uh, bank? Because no, he will not. As an engineer, I'm a Marisuru, I need to mavan. You see the power of words? On some words we have never observed, for example, in English we still say driving because those days people drove animals and carts were drawn by animals. But when it came to Sri Lanka, we never said driver. Riyaduru. Now that is more true to what you are doing on a car today. So language is such a beautiful term. When I had to change the word customer care into singular. Can you try translation care into singular? There's toilet care. You try to translate toilet care into singular. We are not thinking like that. In English, you can tell toilet care, car care, auto care, projector care, anything you can put care and it, it sounds okay. But I thought, if you say paribogika seva, I can see Mr. Dhammikar in the audience, there's one place. Can you tell where you get seva? Any place that is supposed to provide you seva or doesn't give? But I said, if you can say satkarya, which is closer to agantuka satkarya, right, which is our, it's our, in our blood. So that's what I mean by bringing words and bringing humanities. Singapore University, four years ago, signed up with a major uh, US, uh, UK university, I can't remember which university, to come and start a faculty of humanities in the engineering faculty to teach arts, drama, theatre, music to engineers because they realize that take Dr. Ravi Javadhan you see the many facets of this person so naturally he got to be an inventor because he has all these things in one then media media need to celebrate innovations provide exposure create platform of discussion you know what they show you 
8.30 to 9.30, this nation is spending time, I don't know, watching what. If that time can be used to kindle the innovative uh, skill of our people, show them what's happening in the world. I told ITN when I went to ITN to do this Young Inventors Club program, can we try to do what TV has done to singing? Today, Sri Lankan singing has come to a very high level. The whole critical mass has increased. The common denominator has come up. So that is what we do with uh, media. Right? Show what's happening in the other, other parts of the world. And there are a lot of interesting programs, a lot of interesting things to show. And policy, framework, consistency. I will not talk about it. <laughs> Cohesiveness. How to have cohesiveness when you don't know which minister is responsible for what. And unfortunately, if one organization is not doing something, we go and create another organization because we are scared to touch that organization. I think it's high time government, before talking of merging uh, other organizations, there are a lot of government organizations that they can merge and uh, acquire and merge. Because if you don't do that, it's disaster. And there must be strategic protection, right? There must be strategic protection. In education, there must be strategic protection to start private uh, studies here. We send Sri Lankan students to study at Bangladesh, in Dhaka, in Chittagong. I mean, those are not places kids can live. I met my best friend's child there. I said, why did you do that to her? You know, so we and there are a lot of uh, local industries who can really compete if they give them a chance. And there must be focus promotion. It's very important. They must tell these are our five problems. Please come up with your solutions. When we introduced one category called uh, teaching aids, year after year, the number of inventions increased because suddenly they think, oh, you know, you can do it and promote collaboration. Tell me that. Where do they collaborate? Just look at, on traffic, who is the biggest vehicle owner? Not you and I. The government owns the largest number of vehicles. Right? Why can't they take a platform like Pick Me and imagine the entire government as a cab company? Right? When do you, why, you don't need your vehicle right now. Anyway, you can't go, it's raining, that's why I keep talking. <laughs> Right? You need the vehicle only when you want to move. So, just like Uber. So you now there is platforms available. Government first should start doing that. Right? So there should be collaboration. And now that is at the national level. I'm coming to the com company level and to individual level. After that, the lecture is over. In the company level, if you want to innovate. Innovation must come to the philosophy of the company. If you bring it into the company's philosophy, it will drive the kind of policies that you adopt. That will drive the type of people you bring to the organization and the processes that you will have in the organization. If we can create in the organization people, processes and policies that encourage observation, that encourage questioning, that encourage experimenting, that encourage networking, that encourage associational thinking. At one time, I uh, was talking to Unilever and asked, can I send few of my management members to Unilever and get Unilever people to work in my uh, company? Somehow we couldn't get it going. Because manufacturing people will look at what we in the service industry doing differently. You know, that's the kind of thing you should do in organizations. But we are, let alone talking to other companies, we don't allow departments to talk to other departments. So how can you, your companies uh, uh, innovate? Today, we still have suggestion boxes. Now, for me, I cannot understand the, the two things don't go together, a suggestion and a box. Why do you think, why do you put into a box? To see. So there shouldn't be suggestion boxes. There must be suggestion platforms. Right? Today technology provides you for that. Just imagine a Facebook-like platform in a company 
where everybody makes suggestions and your peers and colleagues and everybody comments oh what a stupid idea what a great idea why don't you do like that and you will see trending you can today watch that and you pick the best ideas and implement so go away go to office tomorrow and throw away the suggestion box after that there are no more suggestions and if you go to the company and look at your business this framework if any task is repetitive and logical however complex the logic is however complex the logic is i believe such tasks should be and can be done with machines right and if we go to our companies and we will see this and if we put this into our mind and look at we will think why can't we change this is what you need to do if any task is repetitive and logical however complex the logic one of the most difficult logic is in driving but they predict one of the first jobs that will go off in usa is driving in sri lanka of course you might still need some time right because we are so illogical in our driving so it will not work huh? it's not logic so you cannot replace us so we have jobs huh? as drivers then there are when you think of innovations we only think of products innovations i will not go into detail but if anybody wants i will send the slides there are process innovations now there are a lot of examples even in the government like for example today you don't have to go to any place to renew your revenue license you can do it from your home pay online and print the temporary uh, revenue license and drive on very soon the police will also give you the option of you know pay on the spot and continue on your with your credit card they will be given a post machine why not because the government think the police is there to collect money not to reduce accidents right the co processors offering products products now this is okay a lot of people think of is and the delivery channels how do you deliver and the financing models right so these are areas to innovate so in your enterprise there's lot of room for innovation this needs thinking of changing the mindset and improve observation and very importantly question finally to individual i said a while ago innovation is a skill a skill that can be learned if we believe that and if we apply these five principles into our lives to begin to observe question differently same situation ask different questions and in your mind think of experimenting and networking with people that you are not normally associated with and try to think of a solution which is completely different let me give a simple example at a philosophical level according to buddhism which is a religion which talks of multiple reasons not one reason and it talks about utuniyama bijaniyama kammaniyama dhammaniyama and chittaniyama utuniyama means according to the weather bijaniyama means heritage uh the the dna kind of things and kamaniyama means the complex law of actions and reactions based on volitional thought and dhammaniyama is the nature of things how things work now we cannot control any of those things but there's only one niyama dhamma that you can control that is chitta niyama how you look at things so it means we need to develop this when prince buddha siddhartha was in search of enlightenment there were so many teachers they were experimenting they were asking the question why do people grow old why do they get sick why do they die why there is unhappiness so they were asking a different question then siddhartha came and asked a different question no 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 that's not the problem problem is being born so if you stop being born there are none of these problems are there so can i find a way how to not to be born you see 
So even at that philosophical level, it is the questioning that brings the solution. So what I try to do this one and a half hours is to uh, look at various aspects that affects innovation. And I covered the innovation uh, DNA of the innovation. And then I gave these uh, factors which you can influence. If you are an inventor, I invite you to continue your journey. If you are a business person, on one side, there's an opportunity for you to innovate in your organization or look at an inventor and just like this Andy, uh, what's his name, Bickelsheim or somebody, he's the one who gave this 100,000 check to a, a Larry Page when he went with the Google idea. Unfortunately, we haven't heard of Sri Lankan business people like that. Not 100,000, at least 10,000, they will go and do different things and try to innovate at your individual mind level. With that, I conclude this presentation. And you have been a wonderful audience. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Robert Kennedy once said, some men look at things the way they are and ask why. I dream of things that are not and ask why not. Dr. Ray Widjewadhan, the late Dr. Ray Widjewadhan, made this his ethos in life. It was in his very DNA, if I am to borrow the terminology that Mr. Surya Raj used. And I think you would agree with me when I say that today's lecture was a tribute to that statement. And I believe that every single one of us were not only enlightened, but entertained as well by that lecture. Thank you so much, Mrs. Uriarachi, for that excellent lecture. <laughs> the Institution of Engineers of Sri Lanka would like to thank Mr. Surya Raji for taking time off his schedule to be present here this evening and would like to present a memento of appreciation. Therefore, it gives me great pleasure to call upon the president of the Institution of Engineers, uh, Engineer Vimalasena um, Gamage, to kindly come forward. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for our speaker this evening. Thank you so much, sirs. And that brings us, ladies and gentlemen, to the conclusion of uh, this evening's Ray Vijay Wardana Memorial Lecture. I believe that heartfelt gratitude should be given to the Institution of Engineers of Sri Lanka for organizing this event, along with the Ray Vijay Wardana Charitable Trust. Specifically, we would like to thank the president of the institution, Engineer Vimala Sena Gamage. And of course, the main sponsors, the media sponsors, the print media sponsors being, being the Daily FT, the Daily Mirror, the Sunday Times, and Lanka Deepa, and of course, the High Magazine, and the, the media sponsor, Art Television. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, I would be failing in my duties this evening if I did not also extend a heartfelt gratitude to all of you for being present here this evening, for braving the weather and being here. Uh, let me wish you uh, a safe journey back, but let me conclude by quoting yet another um, statement, if you would give me the permission to do so. Um, so that so few now dare to be eccentric marks the chief danger of our time. This was said by John Stuart Mill. And if there is anything that we can take away from Mr. Surya Rachi's speech today is that it's okay to be a little eccentric. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, with that in mind, go out and innovate and, you, and make the innovator's DNA your DNA. Good night and have a pleasant evening.